All right, so final exam review, day three. Um, right now we're going to jump over to 45 and 47 uh, just to kind of get, get those done and out of the way. And uh, if there's more questions, we'll cover those. Um, if not, we'll come back to number 27, okay? So let's see, 45. i got to let it redraw it, so let's see. Give it a couple seconds. What is this? 45 and 47. So what I'll do is I'll do 44 and 45 because they're both the same, same idea. Um, and then we'll go and do 47, which is factory. Okay. So uh, let's look at numbers uh, 44 and 45. So the problem say to identify the A, B, and C from each equation, find the axis symmetry, vertex, direction, and y intercept of each quadratic function match the function to the correct graph. Now, um, it's interesting they give us all these instructions, but all we really have to do is just graph it. Okay, so that means you don't really have to find everything. The reason why they tell you to do that is because it could help you figure out which graph it is. Okay, so when it comes to this, um, let me see. So, um, like I said uh, before I pause it, the most important thing for us to know is what do the pieces mean, and then based on what the little things that I can give you hints on how they help us, maybe we can eliminate some options. So let me just remind you guys about the formula that we're using. We're using this formula. This is called the standard form, okay? This is the standard quadratic form. Standard quadratic form. There's also a vertex form for quadratic functions, which we can, we'll eventually see. But this is the standard form. It doesn't have any parentheses, okay? No squared terms, like uh, no parentheses squared, okay? Um, it does have a squared term, but not in a parentheses. So this is called the, sta the standard quadratic form or the standard quadratic equation, whatever you want to call it. Um, but y equals to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, just to remind you, a tells me whether it goes up or down. Okay? If it's positive, the graph opens up. If it's negative, the graph opens down. Okay? And then the only other thing you can get from this is your c value, which is my y-intercept. Okay? Aside from that, you have an axis of symmetry, which is really helpful sometimes, and that's going to be negative B over 2A. All right, so this is what you guys can get from this. And then if you wanted to find your vertex, you have to plug your axis of symmetry into your equation, and that gives you your Y value. So you get your X and your Y from there. Okay, so uh, maybe we do that, maybe we don't, we'll see. But... All right, let's look at this problem right here. They want me to tell them which one is the correct graph. Now, based on my A term, should this, so my A term is right here. Should this graph open up or down? Down, right? So it can't be this one. It can't be this one. Uh, it could be C, and it can't be D. So obviously my answer is C, okay? Now, I don't just want to stop there because... What if you had two of them that were down? How would you approach it next, right? The next thing I would do is I would look at my y-intercept. What's my y-intercept for this problem? Negative All right, negative 22. But look at, the, look at my issue that I have here. Look at the answer, okay? Um, is your name on it? Abraham. Oh, Abraham, okay. But is his name on it? No. No, all right, so I'll try it now. Um, the problem that I have here for C, even though I know C is the right answer, can I see that it's crossing negative 22 on the y-axis? No. Not really, right? I mean, it gets as close as negative 12 maybe, but it's nowhere near touching. So that doesn't really help me. So how can I tell another way? Well, I'm going to use my axis of symmetry, okay? So let me, let me calculate my axis of symmetry. So negative b, so x is negative, b is negative 12, okay? 
and then uh, over 2 times a, which is negative 2. So it's 12 over negative 4, which is negative 3. Now, why does this help me? I'm going to draw a vertical line at x equal to negative 3. Okay, the line that cuts it in half. And let's see which ones match. So here we go. First graph. Is that one touching negative 3? That first graph? I drew a vertical line. Where is it crossing? On the 4. On the 4. That's not my axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry is supposed to be at negative 3. So again, it's not A. We know that already, right? What about B? That's crossing negative 4. That's not the right number. What about C? I mean, you can't see the number, but it is going right to the middle of it, right? That's negative 3. And what about D? Well, that's going at 1, right? So notice there's only one of them that has the right axis of symmetry, okay? Now, what do you do if two of them had the right axis of symmetry? Then you got to find the vertex, okay? Then you get that answer, negative 3, and plug it into your equation, figure out what your y value is, and see which of those graphs has that vertex, that point. Okay? So if all else fails, you've got to find your vertex. All right? So let's look at number 45, the initial problem that you wanted. So if we're looking at 45, which way does it open? All right, because my A term is a positive 1, right? So it could be A, it could be B, it could be C, but it cannot be D. So right now we've gone from 1 in 4 chance to a 1 in 3 chance of guessing correctly. All right, next, um, I want to find my Y-intercept, okay? What's my Y-intercept? All right, positive 3. So this one crosses at positive 3. So that's a good option. This one crosses at, I don't know what this is, like negative 17. So that's not right. And this one crosses at about the same place. That's not right. Okay, so my option that's left is A. Okay, now again, if you forgot about the y-intercept and you're like, how am I going to be able to tell? Find your axis of symmetry. Let's just do it really quick just so we can get one more practice out of it. So negative b, which would be negative 4 over 2 times a, which is 1. So that's 4 over 2, which is 2. And notice if I draw the line that cuts that graph, it's crossing right through 2. That's where it's supposed to cross. Okay, so A is my answer um, for various reasons. Mostly because the y-intercept, that's the only one that has the right y-intercept. Okay, it's the only one that's opening up with the right y-intercept. The other ones are wrong. So, um, did I have to find the vertex? No. Uh, do I have to list my ABCs? No, I don't have to. Do I find the axis of symmetry all the time? No. Okay, most importantly, which way does it open? What's your, your y-intercept? With this one, you can find y-intercept. With the other equation, the, the y equals to a times parenthesis x minus h squared plus k, that one, there is no y-intercept in that equation. There's a vertex, there's an a term. That's about all you get from this. So that's 45. Did that, did that help? Okay. All right, 47 was the next one that was asked of me. So let's go to 47. Like I said, we'll go back to the other stuff once you guys... Uh, don't have any other questions. All right. So when you factor this, they're going to want you to factor using either the box method or the X method. Um, but remember, there's a 3 right here, which means after you factor it, you have to divide your factors by 3. Okay? So maybe that's why you struggle with it. I'm not sure. Um, but let's see. So a times three, three times four is 12, and then 13 goes here. Uh, I need a positive 12 to multiply, or I need something to multiply as positive 12, adds up to 13. So positive one, positive 12. That multiplies to 12, adds to 13. Now, since there's a three in the front, I gotta divide by three. 
So this side is a positive 4, and this side stays positive 1 third. Let me write my factors. x plus 1 third, x plus 4. That no fractions allowed, so we're going to put 3x plus 1, x plus 4. That's going to be b. Is that, is that okay? All right. So remember, if there's an a term that's not a 1, you got to divide. Okay? Got to make sure you divide. Are there any other questions you guys want to see? Again, not that you have to. Like I said, I just prefer it because that means we're tackling on the questions you want to see. Maybe you could care less about 26 and 27. Um, but we'll do them if we have to. You guys good? All right, so here we go. Let's go back to 26 and 27. So basically 27, they're just asking us, is the description given that equation that they wrote? So is that equation a direct result of the description that they wrote up there? Okay. Now, I do want to remind you guys this. The equation that they're trying to mimic is this one. Okay? Where A tells you whether it opens up or down. If A is positive, it goes up. If, B, if A is negative, it goes down. HK is our vertex. Remember, uh, if H looks negative, it goes right. If H looks positive, it goes left. And if k is positive, it goes up. And if k is negative, it goes down. Right? Those are the, the pieces to all that. So um, first thing they said is that this equation, based on the way it looks, it opens up. Is that true? No, it's negative. This is down. So automatically, I know it's false. Let's just check the rest of it. Is it right that two, it goes two units left? Yeah. This does go to the left two times. And then it says three units down. Oh, yeah, that's three units down. So two out of three are correct, but it doesn't matter. We're not doing percentages, right? We're doing completely correct. So, so this one goes down, left. Uh, it opens down, and then it goes left and down, okay? Um, so they almost had it right that they put opens down. For number 28... They say this one opens down. Is that correct? Yeah, so negative is down. It goes 10 to the right. Is that correct? Yes, it is. So this is going to the right. And then 6 up. Yeah, this is going up. So it's all good. So this is just based on you being able to identify the parts and see how they work. And honestly, that's, that's, this test is like a, a perfect example of the way we teach Math 3 and Math 2. We're looking for understanding. We, we don't test you guys on like super hard questions. Um, there's no sense in doing that. If I want to give you hard questions, I'll wait for you to get the calculus, and then I'll, then I'll challenge you. Okay? But the point of Math 1, 2, and 3 is fundamental understanding. Do you understand how to work the problems? at their basic form because if you can understand how to do it at their basic form you can change the problem around and you'll still understand how to do it um, there's no sense for me to hammer you guys with really com comp uh, complicated problems and you don't know what to do just because I'm confusing you right so so I always test for understanding I don't I don't check to see like oh can they do this five minute problem like that'd be great um, I'll do that with my cal kids but not with you guys so here we go uh, evaluate each function. So all we got to do is take f of x, which is 4x plus 3, and plug in a negative 2. That's what f of negative 2 means. Plug it in. Okay? So I'm just going to put this plug in. Okay? So f of negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 plus 3, which is negative 8 plus 3, which is negative 5. 
Mega. Remember the f of negative 2, we say it f of negative 2. That's a saying. It does not mean that you write this. Do not write this part right there. You're not multiplying it. Okay? Uh, it's a statement. f of negative 2. A another way of saying it is f composed of negative 2, meaning I'm plugging in a negative 2 into my f function. Okay? So don't solve for f. Don't divide by negative 2. No, that's a saying. f of negative 2. What do you get when you plug in negative 2? That's what that means. Okay? So just find your answer and you're good. All right, number 30, perform these indicated operations. They give us g of x, f of x, and we just got to find g of x minus f of x. In other words, subtract. So let's do the subtraction here. g of x is negative 4x minus 4 minus f of x. That's x minus 5. So I'm going to get rid of the parentheses here. i got to distribute this negative. And then I'm just going to simplify. So negative 4x minus x is negative 5x. And negative 4 plus 5 is a positive 1. So my answer is B. Uh, yesterday, you guys asked for 31. So we don't have to do that one again. Uh, 32 was done. 33 was done. Not 34. Not sure why I didn't do 34 if I did 35. But um, okay. So solve the system uh, of inequalities by graph. So the first equation, I have y less than negative 2x minus 2. Let me write that down right here. My slope is negative 2. My intercept is also negative 2. Okay? So, um, and my line is supposed to be dashed or solid for the, top, the first one. The one I'm writing down. It says less than. So is that a dashed line or a solid line? That's a dashed line. So I'm just going to do this. So I'm looking for a dashed line that's going downhill because the slope is negative, And it's crossing through the y-axis at negative 2. Okay? I'm looking for three components. A line going downhill, crossing through negative 2 on the y-axis. That's dashed. So look at part A. Is that a line that's going downhill, that's dashed, crossing through negative 2? Yeah, so this might be a, an option, okay? This might be an option. Um, which way should it be shaded, though, above or below? If it says less than. Below, it should be down here. Does it look like the answer is down here? No, the answer is up here. So this one can't be right. Okay. So let's go to the next one. That one, it can't be this one. It doesn't even have any dashed lines. Right? So I'm not even going to bother. All right. This one has dashed lines. Does this one have a line that's going down with a uh, crossing negative 2 on the y-axis? No. So then it can't be this one. So obviously, I did hear one of you guys say it's D. Uh, I think, I guess it has to be, right? Uh, because this one's a line going down that's dash crossing at negative 2. And then the other equation was, what was it? 1 half x plus 3. So let me write it right here. So my slope is positive half, intercept of 3, and solid line. So a line that's increasing, that's solid, that crosses 3, and it's shaded above. So if we were to shade above, 
that line and below the other one you'll see the gray area is the only area that I have that's hash marked right it has two different directional lines so it'll just be that right here so it's gonna be D these are okay these are easy problems but they're also like hard. Why are they hard? Because you have to be able to say, okay, let me break it down. Slope is positive, so the line's going uphill. Um, my intercept is four, and according to the inequality, it should be dashed. So I'm looking for a line that goes uphill, um, that crosses through a certain Y point, and it has to be a dashed line, and it has to be shaded above or below, right? There's a lot of things you have to think about when you do these, okay? so. It's not that they're hard to do because there's really no work for me to do at all. I just have to analyze. But that's the hard part. You got to analyze it. Okay, you got to know what you're looking for. So slope, intercept, type of line, and if you have to, shading. Okay, I actually, for, to, to choose D, I didn't even have to pick the shading part. Okay, because by the time we were uh, looking at the second equation, we knew exactly which one it had to be. So, um, so yeah, you don't always have to do shading, but you do have to do type of line slope and where it's crossing the y-axis. All right. Any questions on that one, by the way? So yeah, those are kind of tough, but like they're, they're not, but they are, you know. All right, 36. All right, so we did some of these earlier. Um, uh, you had asked me about 45, so this is like 45. Just that the formula is different. So this is called the vertex form. So we have the standard form for quadratics. This is called the vertex form. They call it the vertex form because you can find your vertex. It's HK, right? And remember, H lies to you. So whatever's there, you use the opposite, OK? Um, and A still tells you whether it opens up or down. So let's look at our uh, number 36. What is A for number 36? Uh, it's a negative one right here. So which way does it open? Down. down. Okay, let me look at my options. Up. So that's not it. Down. Up. And down. So it's either uh, B or D. Okay. Next, I want to find my vertex, and my vertex will help me figure this out. What is my vertex? It's HK. What's my HK? All right, negative 2, negative 3. So for B, this point right here is negative 1, negative 4. That's not my vertex. Well, it's my vertex, but it's not the one I want. Okay, so it can't be B, so it has to be D. And if I check it, that is negative 2, negative 3. So that's my answer. I like this method of graphing better because you just got to look at vertex, and it's really easy to find it. You just got to look at your opening direction, and that's it. It's a lot faster than standard form. So let's do the next one here. So what's my A value here? 1. So it opens up and what's my vertex all right let's see uh, which one so it opens up so it can't be a b c can't be d that opens down so it's either b or c and it has to have the vertex of negative four negative one so this one has negative four negative one so that looks like that's my answer this one here is negative 1, positive 4. That's not the right one. Okay. Those are hopefully pretty easy. How are you guys feeling so far when you're looking at this review? Does it seem doable or is it overwhelming? I mean, well, it might be overwhelming because so many pages. But, but hopefully the work seems like I remember doing this stuff, right? Um, maybe just a quick review, but like I said, we we try our best to be as fair as possible to you guys. 
we're not trying to make you guys fail. That is not our goal, okay? Uh, we're not trying to see how many kids we can get Fs. Um, so we try to make it very, very fair. So true or false, that equation is based on that translation. So it says three to the left, five down. Is that true or false? That's true, right? Because this means it goes left and down. Okay, so that's true. And then this one, five right and six up. That's false because this goes left and up. So that, that part right there is not correct. All right. I wanted to get to 42, I said, right? But um, if we can go... I at least want to give you 10 minutes of free time, at least, So, because sometimes listening to this can be overwhelming. Um, what is the axis of symmetry? Oh, these are easy. Well, if you remember, right? The axis of symmetry of, a, of an equation in vertex form, that's just your h value. What's my h value? Uh-huh, negative 3. So my answer is b. Remember, your axis of symmetry in vertex form is just h. x equals whatever h is, right? So x equals to h. h is negative 3, so x is negative 3. So this is your, I'll just put it right here, axis of symmetry in vertex form. So that's pretty easy. What is the vertex of this quadratic? Well, we've done this. What's the vertex? All right, negative 3, negative 5, which would be D. That's not hard to do. We've, we've practiced that a couple times already. Does this parabola open up or down? Down, because it's negative 4, right? So down. And then someone said it right now. What's the y-intercept? Negative 7, right? This. Right there. All right. We'll stop there because we did 45 and 44. We did 47. So we've already done some extra. Um, if you, does anybody have anything you'd like me to do before I kind of stop this? 55. All right, let's check it out. The more we do now, that means the chances are we finish this uh, before the test. 55. All right, so I'm going to get rid of the parentheses. I do have to distribute the positive, but distributing positive doesn't change any sign. So it's just negative 4 minus 4 minus i minus 4. Well, negative 4 minus 4 minus 4 is negative 12 minus i. So that would be b. Remember, we're not multiplying these together. We're just subtract or adding them, adding negative numbers, right? So, anything else? 71. Going all the way to the end here. Hopefully, nobody's getting mad. <laughs> that just means we'll end earlier and you'll have more free time later. Seventy-one. We're seventy-one. Is it the last page? Yeah. All right. Oh, you want me to do a long division problem? All right, here we go. So, six m squared minus eleven m plus four. Let's see if we can use some uh, smart multiple choice testing tactics here. Okay. Um, I don't know if it'll work, but We'll see. All right. I need to know how many times 2m uh, needs to be multiplied in order to become 6m squared. So what do I multiply 2m by to get 6m squared? 3m. 3m. All right. Now, I'm looking. This can't be it. This can't be it. All right. So I'm going to know my answer on the next step eventually because it's either going to be a positive one or a negative one. Right, so let's see. Um, let me multiply 3m times this stuff, right? It's supposed to multiply it. So 
That's 6m squared and 3m times minus 9m. Um, and I'm going to subtract. 6m squared minus 6m squared cancels. Negative 11m minus negative 9m. Minus negative. That's plus. So that's negative 2m plus 4. How many times do I multiply 2m in order to make it a negative 2m? Negative 1. So notice, D is my answer. Do I have to do any more work? I'm done. I'll finish it, but I, if I'm taking a final, I'm, I'm done. I'm moving on. Okay, the rest is just a waste of my time. All right? Because I'm just taking a test. Not like I'm doing the homework, right? So here we go. Let's just multiply it. Negative 1 times 2m is negative 2m. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. We subtract, first term cancels, 4 minus 3 is 1, so my answer is 3m minus 1 plus 1 over 2m minus 3. So I know they don't put their answer in parentheses, and it's okay. I like to do it so that I know where my quotient is and then my remaining. So there's no confusion, but uh, it's fine either way. Anything else? All right, so we'll we'll stop there. Um, tomorrow we'll continue.